And now, young Widder Brown. Mystified by the peculiar behavior of Christopher Simpson, whose guilty secret of murdering his brother Alex is shared only by his fiancée Madeline Harper, Ellen Brown has brought Christopher to her, her home. For Ellen realizes he is under a great strain, but attributes this to his crippled foot and the fact that Alex's widow, Louise Simpson, who inherits all her husband's money, refuses to help him in any way. Now, as Ellen helps Christopher to the sofa in her living room, she says, Christopher, you need a rest. You need to go away. Are you a partner of Louise's? Say that, Ellen. No, no, not at all. I'm just thinking of the terrible strain you're under. It's all right, I guess. I think after something as shocking as your brother Alex's death has happened to a family, the best thing is for them to go away. Louise wants me to go away forever, Ellen. For good. For her good, I guess. Louise has changed a good deal since her husband died. She, she talks so coldly, Ellen, to Madeline and me. I think that right now, Louise is enjoying a little revenge, Christopher, that's all. I think that she wants to make you and your fiancé suffer a little. Ellen, what did Madeline and I do to Louise? Louise remembers her marriage to your brother with great bitterness, Christopher. Alex was cruel to her. He was always taunting her with her shortcomings. And I think Louise feels that you and Madeline didn't sympathize with her. Madeline felt I never fought my brother for my part of the Simpson fortune. I used to say to her perhaps she regretted being engaged to me. I say it now. Oh, I'm sure she doesn't. I think, though, that Madeline is a girl to whom the creature comforts are very important. Yes, it's true. And now, all of you, Christopher, you and Louise and Madeline are, are on edge. Your nerves are raw from the terrible days you've gone through. Louise talked to me as if I were a beggar, Ellen. After all, I am Christopher Simpson. My father founded this county. Louise was nothing for my brother married her. What she is now is due to my family. None of her doing makes her the wealthy woman she is now. I know, Christopher. Oh, it's always been like this, though. People look down on me. People say, poor Christopher. His father was right to leave all the money to Alex. But what about now? Surely I have a right to fight for my inheritance. Have you talked it over with a lawyer, Christopher? Well, I want to see Herbert Temple about it, Ellen. I have to. Surely there's some justice. Of course. Louise thinks that now, with my crippled foot, I can still go back to Chicago. Ellen, I can't. I can't work. I'm helpless. She should have died. Christopher. She should have died with Alex. If they'd been together, if they'd struggled at the top of the stairs, if she'd fallen down the stairwell with him... Christopher... You mustn't think thoughts like that. How can I help it, Ellen? You didn't hear Louise talk to me. She learned a lot from Alex. How to make you feel as though you were nothing. Nothing at all. But Christopher, after all... Perhaps the wrong person died, Ellen. Perhaps Madeline was right. What do you mean, Christopher? It should have been Louise. Louise should have died. It should have been Louise. Christopher. Christopher. What? Well, I'm sorry, Ellen. Things sort of blacked out again. I haven't slept well, you know. You seemed a little absent-minded for a moment, that's all. Perhaps I relax here, Ellen. Perhaps I relax too much. I'd better go back to the house. No. No, wait a while, Christopher. Why? Why do you want me to wait? So that I'll talk some more? Are you spying on me, Ellen? Christopher, you asked to come here. You telephoned me and asked me to come and pick you up at the house. Remember that, please. I don't trust anyone, Ellen. I want to go home. I'm a cripple. You have to help me. Of course I'll help you, Christopher. I thought you were a friend. But you're not. You're a spy, Ellen. You're on Louise's side. You're wrong, Christopher. I'm not a spy. And I'm on no one's side. Come, I'll, I'll help you get home. Being here isn't doing you any good. Now, after taking Christopher back to the Simpson house, Ellen is with her fiancé, Dr. Anthony Loring, in his office at Health Center Hospital. And after hearing about Christopher's visit, Anthony is now saying to Ellen, How do you mean Christopher behaves strangely, Ellen? Well, Anthony, he'd talk quite rationally, and then he'd stop completely. And the next thing he'd say would be quite irrelevant. You mean he blacked out for a bit and then came to? Something like that. He didn't close his eyes. He didn't faint or anything. But he did seem far away. Was he conscious of it? Yes. 
Well, it happened in the car, driving him to my house. He, he told me he thought it was the pills you gave him. He just sort of faded, is that it? But he talked, Anthony, and then didn't know what he said. Hmm. Which is bad, because he accused me of spying. Of spying? Yes. Oh, I'm telling you, darling, it, it was quite disturbing. I didn't know what to do for a while. In other words, he got nasty. Well, yes. But you know how Christopher is, sort of pale about everything. I, I, I think he's liable to become really ill mentally. He had that strange look about him. Well, nothing about the Simpsons would surprise me. Anthony, did you know that it was Alex who shot Christopher in the foot? Alex? No. I knew they'd been on a hunting trip and that there'd been an accident. But Christopher said it was Alex who shot him in the foot. And when he said it, he didn't seem to leave much room for it being an accident. Oh? That was when he blacked out the first time. He was, he was very bitter about it. And then he asked me what he'd said. The children? Oh, I don't know. Possibly I'm exaggerating, but I, I was so glad to get him back to his home. Look, don't have anything more to do with him if you can avoid it. And I'll just keep a weather eye on him. But could he be dangerous? He could, or he couldn't be. But I do know this. I'd rather you didn't invite trouble. He said the wrong person died. What? He said that the second time he blacked out. He said Louise should have died instead of Alex. And then the next minute, he, he didn't remember he said it. And told me that I was leading him on to talk, trying to find out something. Hmm. Well, don't worry about it, Ellen, because you won't be seeing him anymore. I think I'll drop over there and look him over. Meanwhile, at the Simpson house, Madeline Harper is leaving after her argument with Louise, and as she comes out on the lower terrace, she finds Christopher where Ellen left him, his eyes closed. And she says, You're not asleep, Christopher. Open your eyes. You hear me? I hear you, Madeline. Where have you been? Where were you with Ellen Brown? Madeline... I saw you go while I was arguing with Louise in the living room. We both saw you go. Where did you meet Ellen? Did you go to her? Did she come for you? Did you meet her on the street? I don't propose to go through an inquisition. Oh, don't be absurd. You're a fool, Christopher. But I think you'll work when you try to be a papa fool. You hate me, don't you? Completely. I loathe you, but I'm tied to you, Christopher. I'm as tied to you as if I'd married you. And I'm not going to be dumped out now that all the Simpson money is in Louise's hands. I'll hang on to you and make me fight her. Madeline, I have to tell you something. I don't want to hear it. Louise is going to pay me off and pay me off plenty. For what? She doesn't have to. I have the love letters she wrote to Anthony Loring and her diary in which she pours out her feeling for him. And she said I could throw them away. She doesn't care about them. But she will. I'll fix her, Christopher. We're all on edge, Madeline. That's what Ellen thinks. She says we're all on edge over Alex's death. Are you falling in love with a sweet, good neighbor? Are you letting her gentle airs win you? Are you talking, Christopher? Are you talking too much? Madeline. What did you tell Ellen Brown? I didn't tell her anything. Are you weakening, Christopher? Are you looking for a sympathetic ear? For somebody to confess to? Somebody to tell how you murdered your brother? Madeline, How Madeline. you killed him and why? Oh, not for money, because he had it tied up so you wouldn't get it. You killed him so you could feel important. You killed him too soon, Christopher. I killed him because you told me to. That's a lie. You showed me how to do it. You talked about the stairwell. About making him jump from the top landing down the stairwell. You did, Madeline. You put it in my mind. You did it too soon. If you'd waited, it would have been all right. But now it's... It's all to do again. No. All to do again, Christopher. You've got to make Louise go up to the top landing and fall down the stairwell. Let me alone, Madeline. Let me alone. You're killing me. Shut up. Somebody come. Who? Louise? No. It's Anthony Loring. Christopher, what did you say to Ellen that Anthony Loring is coming here now to... What did you say to her? I swear, nothing. Nothing, Madeline, nothing. Hi there, Christopher. How are you? Interrupting this violent scene between Christopher and Madeline, will Anthony's suspicions be aroused, and will his warning be regarded by young Widder Brown?